Hello, today I'll be walking you through how the permanent debt module works in my all-in-one model. Uh, the thinking here is I'm going to walk you through the methodology, uh, the different inputs, and how they interact with the larger model itself. So let's start first, how do we activate this module? We're here on the summary tab. We go here to permanent financing module and we just set this to yes. And as soon as we set this to yes, this perm debt tab opens up. Then we come up here to the top. Let me just walk you through a few of the outputs first. So this is showing you the funding date, which will be in the, in the case of an acquisition, uh, month zero becomes your funding date. And that is your analysis start date minus one. If there's a construction period, so if this is a, a value add or a development deal, your funding date will be your first stabilized month. And think about that. You're going to have construction financing up into, until stabilization, at which point your construction debt is taken out by this uh, permanent debt stack. These calculations then are made on these two cells. We also have stabilized value, and this is important because we'll be calculating our loan to value based on this. And the stabilized value is calculated as the sum of the first 12 months of stabilized cash flow capitalized at some uh, cap rate assigned by you, uh, the model and the inputs that you put into the model. And that's done here on the property cash flow tab. And so this here is flowing directly over from here. And this is looking at the monthly cash flows as calculated here and dividing that by this cap rate. Now you can change how this value is derived whether, or in other words, whether it's uh, whether you're capping net operating income or capping cash flow from operations or the cash flow that the net operating income less your capital expenditures. And then this cap right here uh, is an orange cell, which means there is a default value that's calculated and it's most likely correct. But there are instances where it makes sense to use a different cap rate. But this cap rate is the market cap rate that you that you chose in summary L21 grown at some uh, increase, uh, in base, a basis point increase every year. And it could decrease as well. And that basis point increase in this case is seven and a half basis points. And again, that's an input cell K19 on the summary tab. And so you take that uh, first year stabilized net operating income, you divide it by the cap rate in that first stabilized year and you come up with a property value. If we come back then to the property, uh, the perm debt tab, uh, that is that value. And this tells you when the first uh, stabilized month occurs and that is in time zero in this case because it's an acquisition deal. Finally, we have acquisition costs. Uh, in the case of a development deal, this becomes development cost. Uh, and this value comes from the summary tab and is important for calculating our loan to cost. And so as we're looking at this loan, we want to understand what's our loan to value and what's our loan to cost, two incredibly important metrics to lend those who may be lending on this property. Next, we have loan fees. Uh, again, an input, as is your loan amount. Uh, so you drop in your loan amount, it will tell you what your loan to value is. If you want to size this based on loan to value, you can solve uh, for a certain loan to value using a goal seek, right? So let me show you that. Uh, we come up to the data ribbon, what if analysis goal seek. We pull this little goal seek window over. And this is pretty simple. The first question is we want to set a certain cell, and in this case, we're going to set our loan to value cell to some value. We're going to set it to 60% or 0 0.60 by changing the loan amount. And then Excel is just going to do an iterative process. Oops, this has to actually have a value in it. So let me just grab that in, okay? So this has to be a value, it can't be a formula, which it was before. So again, I come back up here what if analysis, goal seek, get that window back. We're going to set our loan to value 
to 0 0.60 by changing our loan amount. And then Excel will do that iterative process that I described, and it will size the loan for you such that your loan to value hits the 60%. Next, we have loan fees. The default is just to multiply your loan amount by some percentage that you choose, in this case, 1%. And then it tells you here to the left what percentage of your loan amount the loan fees equal. Next, we have a fixed interest rate. Uh, if you, if this is a variable rate loan, this would be the average rate over the term, roughly the average rate. I, I realize that's not exactly precise, um, but for permanent debt, fixed rate is more common, and so that's the value that we're using here. So you'll set that uh, that fixed interest rate on an annual basis. Again, for the senior debt, you'll set an amortization period. And this is the amortization after your interest only period ends. In the case here, the interest only period equals the loan term, and therefore this is not important. Now you can't set this to zero. And in a future iter iteration, I will change, I'll put some data validation in there so that it doesn't error out the model. But again, uh, that won't have any impact here unless we set our interest only period to zero, in which case the loan is amortizing from the beginning. I'll go back to I.O. All I.O., I should say. Finally, the model in your senior debt tells you what the amortization payment and the I.O. payment is. And that's important because over here off to the right, in our actual amortization that's happening in each period, this payment in part is, calc or is pulling over from this calculated payment. And then you see an output here. Uh, it is telling you what your payoff at loan maturity is. Your loan maturity is at month 84, which, by the way, uh, this model automatically lines up your loan maturity or your, lo your loan payoff with uh, your exit or your sale date. And I realize in the real, in the real world that's not necessarily what happens, uh, but in the case of you know, calculating... Uh, returns, having an analysis period, it just makes more sense to line those up. And so your payoff is based on that. And then you can also uh, add in some junior debt or some mes debt or so, some debt that's not senior. Uh, and so you would drop that loan amount here. And then off to the left, it's going to tell you what the combined loan to value and the combined loan to cost becomes by adding that additional debt. So we could just zero this out and it has no impact. Or we add some additional debt and it will have an impact. And you'll see that especially in, in the return. Then we have loan fees. You drop those in. Interest rate, again, similar or identical to a senior debt, amortization, and your I.O. period. And then what happens, again, the for each period, your beginning balance in each period, the payment that is made in that period, interest paid, uh, principal. Uh, then you have these two lines, loan funding and loan, loan payoff. And these are important because it allows you to, to view and, and, and ensure that your loan funding is in fact happening at the point of stabilization and your loan payoff is happening in fact at the point of sale. And then you have the ending balance. Similar lines for your junior or mes debt. And finally, the permanent financing. This is really simple. It is just the sum of the cash flow from each of the two tranches to give you the roll up or the total permanent financing. And then we just scroll out to the right to finish. And you'll see, as I continue, it automatically uh, leaves the rest of these cells empty. Uh, just to make it pretty, and you'll see month 84 is the end of our analysis period. That's when the loan is paid off. So that is the permanent debt module. Uh, reach out with questions you have them, and thanks for your time.